Hello everybody, um, this is Basil from Techno Talk. Pardon if my voice is a bit low. Um, it's kind of late here when I'm making this tutorial. And really, I haven't done a tutorial in months. And, um, I just wanted to go ahead and say that I want to get back into this channel that I've been kind of ignoring. Um, but I'm going to make some changes. Uh, for one thing, um, when I first, uh, headed out and started making these tutorials, I was quite novice. Um, I just got, I was kind of new into the world of programming and I got so excited that I started putting tutorials out, but I feel like my early Java tutorials in particular uh, were quite bad. Um, they skimmed over a lot of important things and mentioned a lot of things that didn't make any sense. And uh, so I'm going to try to make it better from here on out. And whenever I find the chance, I'll try to go back on some basic thing that I forgot. But I'm going to try it with my Java tutorials to make it a bit better. Um, one thing is that I started C++ tutorials because, you know, I started learning C++ as another language and I thought it was pretty cool if I could do, you know, like different languages. Uh, but one issue with that was that, uh, again, I jumped the gun a bit and I kind of discovered rather quickly just how similar C++ and Java are. And so it kind of led me to understand the fact that if you know Java, you know C++. There's a few syntactual differences that I'll still try to go over if you want me to, but really you can just look them up and, you know, library differences and different accessible modules and stuff like that. Um, but one programming language that is also quite widely used that is quite different from Java and C++ in terms of style is Python. And I've uh, begun to learn Python. I'm not going to make the same mistake, though. I'm not going to start that tutorial series until I become a little more experienced in it. Um, like, that messed me up with Java. But now I am uh, quite more experienced with Java, so I'm going to continue with this series. And eventually I'll get the Python ones out. I know a lot of people enjoyed the XHTML uh, tutorials. I just realized that I put XHTM right there. What a noob. Um, so hopefully I'll get back to those. And maybe do some JavaScript. And uh, I also understand that the After Effects tutorial was quite popular. People wanted me to make more After Effects tutorials, but uh, I, I need. Uh, if you have a request for something you want me to show you how to do, go ahead and leave a comment. Send me a message because I really don't have anything in terms of After Effects to do tutorials on at the moment. Uh, the snow thing was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into this Java tutorial, which is going to be about using uh, JFrame, because uh, a while ago. I taught you how to use J option pane, and again, I did this whole thing out of order because I didn't know what I was doing. But um, J option pane, I talked about GUIs, which are GUIs, graphical user interfaces, you know, getting out of the command prompt in the console and getting into actual windows. But J option pane is a very, very, very simple version of it, and really all you use it for is flashing messages and stuff in stuff in much more complicated programs. Uh, so right now we're going to learn how to make uh, GUIs in Java the most popular way, which is using JFrame. So uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. The first thing you want to do is create a class that is going to act as your main class. So uh, and I'll just call this uh, main class. Actually, I should first I should spell main right. God dang. All right, this one's going to have your uh, main method. And um, the thing about once you get into things like GUIs and stuff, and you get started to get out of the more basic things that I've been teaching you, um, you find that a lot of programmers have different styles. Like, um, in terms of dealing with JFrames, I know people, and a lot of people do this, where you can actually create a JFrame object to represent the window. But that's a bit restricted, and you end up cluttering when you're working in the main method or in your main class. So what I prefer to do is I have a... Uh, a uh, my own class to represent the window that will extend um, it, it will ex uh, what's it called inherit uh, JFrame so that I can then make an object of that class of my window class and therefore it'll hold all the attributes and, and contents of the window itself so I'm gonna go ahead and teach you that way that I do it this isn't a quick process so this will probably spend more than one tutorial but uh, go ahead and make a new class and we're going to call this a window, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so here's the first thing that you need to know. And uh, that's just looking at your main class and your main method. We're going to need to make an object of this class. So you don't have to do that. Window w equals new window. Um, 
And that's all we're going to do for now. So obviously, this isn't going to do anything because we haven't actually done anything in window. But this is all we're going to do in the main class. Now you're probably thinking, oh, that's nothing. Why not just do it all together? If you're working in a larger program with more windows, you're going to need to have to have a lot of things here. This, I'm just showing you how to do it once. But it's a good idea to have your main code separated from your window code. Now the first thing we're going to do when starting and working on this J-frame is there's three things that we need to import. Actually, it's a lot of things, but when you have several things coming from one directory in the library that you need to import, you might as well just import everything in that uh, that directory. So the one thing we're going to need is we're going to need a lot of stuff from java.awt. So let's just do java.awt.asterisk to get all of that. And then there's another thing from oh, I forgot to put import. There's another thing from awt, but you have to separate it. It's the event. Oh crap! Stupid clips. So you need to import everything from event. Um, and this is for using action listeners, key listeners, mouse listeners, things that uh, recognize actions on the keyboard and with the mouse and with inputting data that you're going to need if you're going to want to like click buttons and hit and enter information and stuff like that in a window. And then the last thing you need is the Java X dot swing uh, directory because this is going to hold a lot of stuff including JFrame, everything that has to do with the window. Okay, now the first step in this case is you need to have your class extend JFrame. And so I'm not sure if I've already gone over this actually. It's been a long time since I've done a tutorial. But basically this right here just means that this class that you're creating is going to inherit all the methods and variables and everything from the JFrame class, which is already obviously a pre-built class. Um, so now into your actual class, you're going to split it into... Uh, three main things. You're going to have your uh, your instances, which are going to be the actual components of the window. Uh, they all have names. You'll learn them like J label, J button, J text area, J text uh, field, stuff like that. that. Things that actually go into your window that the user can interact with or read or edit or whatever you want. And then you're going to have the constructor of the class, which is going to include all of you know like house cleaning methods in terms of setting size, location. Uh, default close operation stuff like that and then you're also going to have uh, a subclass that will influence an action listener or a key listener depending on what you're what you're trying to get input from and this will have to do with how you're uh, uh, what's it called interacting with the class with the window so wow this tutorial is actually already getting pretty long so uh, let's just go ahead and work with these instances so uh, the first instance we're going to make, uh, just a, I'm just going to make an example of a bunch of different components. Uh, you have a J label, so we can call this label. And then, um, so here we're just obviously creating, why is it telling me that? Oh, because I miss. Label has to be capital L. God. Okay, so um, a J label is like just a label, just text in your uh, window. It's not in a box or anything, it's just text. So you can only do one line at a time, that's why it's a label. But you can also have a uh, oh god j text areas um and you can also have j text fields uh, sorry if i'm typing slow i'm like on my couch right now oops didn't mean to do that cuz it's late i don't want to wake my parents up but um yeah so what a j text area is is it's going to be just basically like a box um you can set the dimensions of the box that you can set it to be editable or uneditable if you want to just display a lot of information or if you want the user to be able to input a lot of information text field would be for something that uh, you want the user to input something but it's not uh, what's it called it's not a lot of information like maybe just a number or a name or something like that I think about just like a text field if you're filling out username and password information or something like that and there's also a J password field uh, might as well add that do as much as I can. So you can obviously kind of guess what this is. It's the same thing, except that you can set it to be seen or not. Um, and then, yeah. So uh, let's create some more instances. Uh, we're not going to deal with J panels right now. J panels get a little bit more complicated, and along with like J scroll panes and stuff like that. So we'll deal with that later. But um, let's go ahead and make a J button. That's always important. What else can we use? This, these are pretty much the basic ones that you'll be using. And then you can get into 
panels and scroll panes and stuff like that, which get a little bit more complicated, but we'll go into that eventually. Uh, the tutorial is running a bit long, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it, and we'll pick up with the constructor in the next tutorial. Alright, see you.